Okay. Um, was there were there any like um, sort of uh, things that you learned uh, during medical school that um, guided you towards like the path specifically for internal medicine? So I entered into medical school kind of with the idea of endocrinology in mind, but mm -hmm. I really wanted to not pigeonhole myself because it's very difficult to um, differentiate yourself without really knowing what these fields are like before getting involved. They right, say that yeah. you kind of find your people, so there's a mm -hmm. different type of personality in different types of fields. And so as a third year medical student, you kind of rotate in your clinical rotations um, and you get a kind of a taste and a sampling of what it's like. So I went in with each to each one with an open mind and um, I really thought that, that I would enjoy aspects of surgery because it is very aesthetic and visceral. You work with your hands, you solve problems and it's very visual. But I, I really didn't enjoy a lot of the culture and a lot of the um, long hours and, and other aspects of it. And I really like people. I really like talking to people and I really like kind of listening to their stories. And I felt like I was getting less of that in some of the surgical subspecialties. So I went more into the other um, specialties. And um, I thought maybe I would like psychiatry for that reason. But I felt that while I was getting to know people, I really wanted more... Um, Kind of answers. I wanted more concrete things to go go on, and so that kind of took me back the pendulum the other way. Mm -hmm. um, and then medicine is kind of this catch-all. It's very cognitive, yet has a lot of kind of concrete foundations that you can go with and help people from. So um, that kind of led me back to where essentially where I began, which is in, with medicine and then endocrine. Cool. Uh, thanks for talking about that. It's kind of nice to uh, have some like uh, insider sort of a story about. Uh, the process or the experience of medical school, how um, you don't really know what you're get signing up for, essentially, and mm -hmm. you just have to sort of feel it out. It's true. So, yeah, I mean, that's, um, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't have thought it was like that. I would have thought it was, like, very concrete, but it's nice to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best advice you received during your residency or medical school so far? So... I was once told by a fellow when I was in medical school that residency is kind of like being having a cinder block attached to your feet <laughs> and you're sitting at the bottom of a, of a stream and the water just continues to rise. This keeps getting worse. <laughs> it just keeps coming at you and instead of struggling, you kind of just have to accept some of it and let it kind of flow over you knowing uh -huh. that you'll eventually get your head above water. And I, I initially I was horrified hearing that as I was entering into intern year, and, and, and it was I was quite scared to start um, residency. And, and I think in a way it's good. It'd be bad if someone wasn't at least a little bit afraid because it's a, quite a scary transition. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you have people's lives that you're taking care of, and so you, you want to have some fear. But the truth is, you're going to have really rough days, weeks, months. Um, but there's going to be kind of like beacons of light that are scattered throughout that kind of refill your cup a little bit. Um, and understanding that and recognizing what you're getting yourself into um, is important. Cool. Um, so, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, there is, like, I get a sense that there is like a hardcore culture in, um, like, especially like a residency. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that uh, sort of um, approach is the right approach? I have mixed feelings about it. I, I think that a lot of the system is somewhat archaic. I think that there have been some great changes that have taken place in the not, not too, you know, more recent uh, past, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we have a long way to go. Um, I think that it's important for us to get a lot of exposure because at the end of the day, residency and being a good doctor has a lot to do with pattern recognition. In order to have those pattern rec patterns recognized, you need to, you know, fill the system up with lots of data sets in order to see all that, so you can then pick out the patterns. So, taking care of lots of patients, taking care of a lot of diverse patients, having the time in the hospital is very important. That being said, I do think that lack of sleep, that lack of balance, that lack of um, being able to to decompress after rough shifts mm -hmm. um, is detrimental. And I don't think anyone benefits from that, whether it be the residents, the program, or the patients. And you know, these long shifts that we have to do occasionally that last 24, 27 hours, you know, it's, it's unsafe. I, I don't think that that needs to be the case anymore. I, I think that we could probably do better. I think there are solutions that could be put into place personally. Um, so I am hopeful that this, this pendulum will swing back into more of a humane way of training. And I think that with the millennials becoming more and more um, kind of vocal, 
and with people, you know, the old kind of guard is retiring and the people that are coming into power are a little bit more um, understanding of these things, I, I do think there's going to be um, a cultural shift, I hope. How do you um, balance like having a very interesting like pathophysiology to work with mm -hmm. and um, also uh, empathizing with your patient? Absolutely. So, I mean, we're all human beings, so, yeah. you know, the suffering of anyone is terrible. And so I think you're right, the, the term fascinating, interesting is always not, not a good um, not a good term because it can connote things that are you know positive, which is obviously not the case. Um, you know, I like to I like to talk to my patients as though like I consider myself a patient before I'm a doctor. I've been dealing with chronic disease my whole life with type one diabetes, and so I understand very much what it's like. Um, and I think it's really important to make sure that the patient recognizes that you care about them as a human being prior to anything beyond that. Um, Osler has a saying that the patient doesn't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So mm. making sure you can create that connection with someone is, is first and foremost. And that's true of anything. I mean, we're, we're in the business of taking care of people. And I think it, in, in doing so, you have to create very serious and, and meaningful connections with people. They say that to diagnose, that most of diagnosis is within the history. So like having a conversation with someone is really where you're going to figure out if you're going to, what they're going to, what they have. And I think in order to have a meaningful conversation, having someone open up and give you the details, you have to be able to listen and talk to them. And the only way that can be done is if you actually are an empathetic and good person, in my mind. Interesting. Um, I wouldn't have necessarily uh, figured that um, medicine, the practice of medicine could be so personal and so like you could find yourself empathizing with uh, people more so than their conditions or their physiology or anything like that. That's, that's, how, that's how you separate the good doctors from the great doctors, the yeah. ones that I think can get, get to that. Definitely. Alrighty, um, and let's see here, what is the biggest misconception about being a doctor? Oh, um, I think a lot of people, there's a couple, I think a lot of people assume that you're rich, <laughs> which is not the case, especially in residency, you're like particularly poor. Uh, but even in, in practice nowadays, um, back in the day, I think it used to be the case that you were, you know, pushing the Mercedes and doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Not so much anymore, depending on the field you go into. So, um, so that's probably one. And the other is I think, I think people and even nurses and other people in healthcare see doctors sometimes as cocky. And yes, I think there's cocky people in every field. And there are some, um, unfortunately, the ones that are cocky are the loudest, you know, so you might then generalize. Um, but that always would bother me that people would make that snap judgment when if you walked in with a white coat that automatically you were some cocky, pretentious person. And, right, that you, know, you had I to be to, held in higher regard or something exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I tried to um, fight those types of stereotypes. I try and sit down and talk to my patients instead of standing and those types of things and, and listen to my patients. And learning the names of nurses and PCTs I think is also important, those types of things, and showing that you're a team and not necessarily a hierarchy. That's very cool. Um, it's nice to hear you uh, championing these uh, great doctor qualities. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, I think that's the end of our questionnaire here. Great. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs>